guest today is one of the great spiritual masters of our time. Awarded, celebrated, awarded the Nobel Prize. One of India's great national inspiration. I'm delighted to welcome you. Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy help define our contemporary world. My guest today has recently been appointed Minister of Sports and Youth Affairs. He's had a distinguished career in the bureaucracy as uh, Chief Election Commissioner, as a member of the Rajya Sabha. I'm delighted to welcome Mr. Amos Gill. We're sort of recording this as at the time perhaps of the postscript of the Olympic torch ceremony. Uh, you sort of have, have, have raised the issue of how uh, it might have been preferable if sports persons were running rather than other people, and I think that has already become a, a, a point of discussion and debate. Uh, I was watching you on television, and, 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 and here you were at the end of the uh, torch relay. What were your feelings as, as a mountaineer, as a person deeply committed to sports, uh, when you saw the sort of you know empty 2.3-kilometer stretch surrounded by 20,000 uh, security personnel and um, 68 people, uh, only about half of them sports persons, uh, you know, handing over a torch to each other after every 20, 30 seconds. It didn't really give you a feeling of, of, you know, the joy and the ebullience and, and the energy of sport. What were your feelings at that time? I looked to the past and certainly the torch uh, ran in a different way. Uh, it was basically sports people, frankly mostly athletes because it's all about running. Other sports who are there in the uh, games uh, uh, certainly have a right to come in. Well, at 20 and seconds you don't need yeah, to be much of an athlete. And, and that used to be <laughs> running a distance, running a distance uh -huh. and you had to have a bit of stamina to have it, right, even right. to do that short right, run right, with the thing in right, your hand. Right. And, and then that, uh, you know, you hand it over. And of course the thing has changed. And as you say, 30 seconds each, you get your photograph taken and you're happy to let go of it. Uh, <laughs> that, I saw that. And, and, and uh, as about the nature of the thing from sportsmen to others, uh, frankly, today I didn't realize it. I'm getting re-educated into the latest in sports that uh, you see non-sportsmen who were running, uh, companies uh, with their support of the games have bought themselves into the torch, which really means that if I had enough money, I could put my uncle G in it. <laughs> but I don't have that money. I don't have that money. And so the nature has changed. I prefer what was. And particularly if you still go on calling it a sacred torch, then I'm afraid the sacred torch can only be held by those who have a sacred right to it. Now that has changed. I somehow feel differently, that's all. Uh, if they made it this way, it's up to them to carry it that way. Uh, so, so that factor is there. And uh, of course, um, I'm not going to discuss uh, at any length the other issue you have raised. But certainly, I, I would prefer uh, a situation where real heroes of sport are running, people we know and people we remember, uh, Zatopek, people like that. Uh, Nurmi, you know, there are great names uh, there. And then, of course, uh, the sides should be crowded with cheering crowds. And he's running with the torch through a squeezed, friendly presence. Don't you think that sport, as is, is reported, is celebrated, has lost the quality of playfulness, of, of, of pleasure, of enjoyment, of the game? Uh, and of the process of, of, of abandonment, of fraternity, of community, of friendships, uh, and has become uh, so aggressive, has become so material. So in terms of, uh, we will come to the sports policies uh, that, that hope that, that you're considering and exploring, but purely as, as, as a sports person yourself and your interest and passion in sport, uh, do you mourn this as much as people like me do? Yes, again, I, uh, I see things uh, in a different shape from what I knew them. I was lucky enough, my father sent me to a boarding school, St. George's in Missouri. I spent six long years. And, uh, you know, we played games with the seasons. Everybody played, good or bad, uh, you know, clever or not. 
and as I keep telling people that I took part in boxing, I never won a round, I took a lot of beating, but then I got one point for my class, for the class championship. And we moved on in the monsoons to football. We used to play in so much rain that you kick the ball, your foot slid off it, and you're standing in front of the goal. Nobody is there, but you can't score because the ground is just roaring away with water, enjoying it. And we all enjoyed our game. And uh, at that time also, the education attitude, still carrying on from the past, was education, marks, examinations coming first, also with sports and in a school. Frankly, my real heroes are not those who came first uh, or any of us might have done it. It is others who really were top of the athletics and things and who went on later to all India level. So but that's gone. So that's th gone. So, so that really, in a sense, is, 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 is the abiding, the, the sort of... Uh, uh, the ground base, as it were, of the challenge to resurrect yes. Well, that's in where India. it came from. And that is that until enough young people feel that sense of enthusiasm and joy and engage in sport and their families and the education system and their schools encourage them to do so, instead of preparing for board examinations, we're unlikely to see that kind of breakthrough and excellence in sports at the national level that we all dream about. I, I blame a changed education system. Marks, marks, marks have become the holy grail. Howsoever you get them, the parents oppress the children down to nursery schools and everything above them oppresses the parents because they want the child to ultimately after college get a job and all selections are fixed simply to marks and decimal points. I don't think that's the best way to get a best man for whatever you want to do, IT or uh, having the IES or whatever else. But I, th I also see that it's going to be very difficult to move this mountain back to a kind of balanced. I have often said that in India, children have lost their childhood. I feel that. Because one, there may not be facilities to play or those who are in crowded urban cities. I lived in defense colony on one of my early postings in the 70s and children are playing in the street. It's so much worse now. Uh, whenever I see a ground in Delhi overrun by somebody or the other, government people, not I am not talking of non-officials, but the PWD will build onto an open piece of ground, their camera, because they think we are going to manage things. Well, yes, I am horrified. You are just sports minister for now and so it's sort of looking at aspects of sports policy and uh, I think there is so much uh, you know, focus and attention on, on, on the pinnacles of sports so we're looking at what's happening with cricket, we're mourning our defeat in hockey, um, we're looking at the Commonwealth Games and more of that later but in terms of policy every government and certainly this government has projected itself as a government for Aam Admi. so what what initiatives do you have in mind that would you like to see in, in, I don't know what, maybe a year is all you have, I mean there will be elections certainly by then, uh, that, uh, that you feel will actually make a difference and impact and, 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 and all of us, I'm Admi and I'm Aurat, uh, because you're very sensitive to issues of gender. Uh, you know, what can we see? What, what, what difference do you think you'll be able well, to make? Well, my common sense view of things, I'm very clear of what policy I think I should have or I should promote. Uh, I don't need to do a big study on it. I think in a country uh, like India, with all its poverty, its ruralness, all its uh, uh, lack of resources or economics, uh, I think it's very simple. Aam Admi's ki sports jo hain, Hindustan mein, obviously it has to be something which is inexpensive in the nature of kit and how you can play it. It has to be playable on every rough ground from Ladakh and Siachen, Nubra Valley. I've been there uh, down to the desert or the forest or the islands, sandy soil or any soil. And it has to be playable by everybody everywhere in any season. What can that be? I, I know, I see and I've been seeing for 15 years now the horror of cricket in monsoons in Guwahati, one day matches. Can anybody explain to me? Now this tournament is starting today, but is anybody looking at 40 degrees or 45 degrees? Even at night these people are going to be out, but there it is, it is there. No, my sports are football. That fits my three criteria. You need a ball, we used to pump it up and fix the punctures, now you don't even have to fix the puncture. Football, you put 
two bricks here, two bricks here, and you have your goals. You don't hit the top bar in a village. We never had it, and nobody wants it. But what what does policy have to do with enabling? people to play football with two bricks and yeah so i don't uh, need i i'm not uh, uh, in a hurry about to write up a learned paper we'll come to that therefore football volleyball again a net a ball and any sandy soil even a beach basketball it's not a question of my favorite games basketball a little bit of cemented place with two hoops and a ball you can play forever and no cost to the government but what running but what value do you think that in in terms of a minister and, and involving government policy resources and, and, and administering it that you will be able to make in these areas that you've just talked about well i would try what to push them completely will you do in what i ways? would try to push them in what ways i would try to encourage them uh, even hockey you know everybody wants to talk hockey and about gills of india but there are other ways now two days ago i read in one of the papers in delhi nice picture of five seven girls with hockey sticks and somewhere in uh, eastern india gazipur was the town i didn't even know whether it's bihar or up and somebody is running a private academy for 30 years training girls training even young boys i just found the address found the telephone i talked to him it made him feel good obviously it made me feel good to talk to him and he casually said well uh, i'll tell you what it is i'll send my brother to meet you i said send him i'll talk to him and he said otherwise you know we could do with a coach nobody sent us well the coach is gone today they must be happy i am happy in other words whatever i can push as you say in the one year or less than one year i might have i'll push mm -hmm. you're watching a conversation uh, with the minister of sports and youth affairs mr ms kale we'll be right back cover short break don't go away Welcome back to a continuing conversation with the Minister of Sports and Youth Affairs, M. S. Kill. You know there has been at least one allusion to say you have a 72-year-old gentleman as a Minister for Youth Affairs. How close do you feel to to to, to the youth, and in, in what ways, and in, in what issues, and what dimensions of youth affairs do you see yourself addressing? It, it's such a large, broad canvas, and they form the, ma the the majority of India's population. You see, I don't have to defend my age, <laughs> right? But I will tell you one thing: your youth also is here in the mind. I have seen twenty and thirty-year-olds who are dead. There is no emotion, no jazzbound in them. You know, this aspect of youth affairs. Uh, what are the elements of of youth affairs? What is that mandate for you? Yesterday I was sports. answering mm -hmm. a question in Parliament. There are 21 crore student age people in India, and we had 10,000 scholarships that to 6,000 uh, 6, a year to a student. It's a joke. Now, if I can push it, if I can expand it, if I can, uh, you know, take it further. After all, India remains rural. Sometimes I think long after we are gone, 50 years hence also, it will be predominantly rural. So six lakh villages. How can I get to them? I was born in a village. I've lived uh, most of my life here. Uh, I've enjoyed the good things of urban India, but emotionally, I remain back there. I want to try and push it. So certainly, on the youth of his side, there are schemes. There are things. And if in any way I can push them, expand it, take. For example, the Duke of Edinburgh. I remember reading long ago in England. There is a scheme called the Duke of Edinburgh's Playing Fields of England. Mind you, they have enough of them already, but obviously they were making more. Now every village needs something. Can I try and push it closer to the villages? That's all. You know, the 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 what's in the news with with sports is very much uh, the defeat in hockey, and you mentioned guilds, and I think there is great deal of uh, you know concern. that many sports bodies are run and managed by politicians by people who don't entirely have a hands on feel of that particular sport or that particular game it's politicized it's um, there's a great deal of emphasis on money on on lucre and that if sports people were actually managing their own institutions and organizations things might be somewhat better two questions is that some is that a principle that you in general endorse and if so what might be done to achieve that you see the general idea you are trying to project of course most people would support and want uh, though mind you it is not logical that somebody who's been in the india team in this or that game automatically becomes the best administrator of that sport 
I could give examples, you would know them, but I leave it at that. But certainly, uh, you know, you want more of them rather than more of the others. That's what you're trying to say. Uh, but it also has to be remembered, like our imperfect democracy with which I have had so much to do in the last number of years, uh, the fact still remains that the person the people of India elect is the member of parliament or member of the assembly, he represents them and 800 of them do represent India as such. The same principle applies in the International Olympic Committee and therefore the state committees and the state federations which I know about and therefore they also have a kind of democratic structure, elections so and so forth. I know of the imperfections as there are on my side of uh, you know electoral democracy. Therefore, it is a complex matter. Uh, one, the idea as I used to say in other context that anything need, that needs to be done for India, if government could do it, it would be perfect. And government in Delhi would be even more perfect than a government in a state. I do not buy that. Therefore, we have to see how there could be a democratic body as is the necessity of the Olympic Charter and also more responsive and more acceptable to sportsmen particularly and to everyone. So how might that be achieved, you think? It is a complex thing. First of all, uh, I do believe now that I have come in here, I will talk to everybody because I do believe in di dialogue, discussion and then trying to decide what I can do. It is not just a hukam. Sometimes it can't even be given. You may like to give it, but you can't. And of course, you should not in my eyes. So, I, I will see uh, talking to, because I know most of them. I enjoy talking to them. And uh, they are as imperfect, let us say, as I am. So, what is the big problem? So, we will talk, we will think and see where I can carry something forward, where it needs to be. Let us see. There was a statement from you that said, uh, you know, that, that now that we are doing the Commonwealth Games, you are committed to making a success of it. Was there a significance to the now that we are doing the Commonwealth Games? Uh, d d what, what value do you see to Commonwealth Games? You know, there is, there is a widely held debate on the value of the Commonwealth Games, whether that infrastructure uh, could, you know, that money could have been used better to, for Ahmadmi, for rural sports, and, and, and whether the, the focus on a event is misplaced, the possibility will bid for the Olympic Games with the participation and support of the government. Would you support something like that? My answer is very simple and I have said it in another context in the election commission. Where I come from, God is screwed our head on in such a way that we can only look this way, we can't look that way. All the issues you are raising are issues of a past. The Commonwealth Games were accepted by the last government in 2003, I understand. This government has re-endorsed and accepted and gone four years into doing whatever uh, is thought to be necessary. Therefore, I said what I am saying that my job as a minister now, today, is to see that we complete all the preparations in good time. We train our athletes quickly and well so that they can win a medal or two. And we have a good show in Delhi and people go back happy that India as usual has delivered on a very high standard of hospitality and technical perfection. This is the job today. All those I could discuss, I might have very clear and strong views on anything, but this is not the day. But there is implicit in the moment, the future, and would you then bid or support an effort or an initiative by India to bid for the Olympic Games? It's, it's premature to think of it, but I do look everywhere. For example, I'll give you a parallel. I'm not going to answer for India, should we, should we not bid, because I'm not bidding today or refusing to bid, and it's not my uh, authority to think of that. But the question again you're raising, I am aware, sitting in London, six, eight months ago or a year ago, I have read lots. I saw how London won it. Tony Blair ran round and round and he managed to beat Chirac. And they celebrated their happiness because they always want to beat the French. Okay? But I have read very learned, very thoughtful material which needs to be considered of 
intellectuals in England and people in England worrying that have we won or Shrek really won? Is London going to be <laughs> done down? So, uh, when the time comes, I have all sorts of thoughts and if I am asked at the appropriate time, I will think of what I want to say. Uh, you have been uh, involved with so many aspects of administration and you have recently taken over this ministry. Uh, assuming it is 12 months uh, of this, what would you like to have achieved? What would you like to have said to yourself uh, you have achieved uh, when this time frame is over? I mean, are there, have you sort of had time to, to draw up an agenda, a, a, a goal or, or merely, not, it is not merely, I think a process is as important as a destination, but what has been your focus? What have you been thinking about? Apart from the generalities of yeah. course. Some obvious things which come to me, I have been talking a bit. Uh, the Commonwealth Games is an agenda. If I leave after a year, I should leave a clear progress towards having the successful worthwhile games in 2010 which has to be done and India has to earn a good name. That is obviously an objective with me. The second is in this period, what can I do to push the games of the Aam Aadmi? and I haven't yet come to Kabaddi and things. Mm -hmm. Do you ever go to the Punjab? There are 20,000, 30,000 people collecting for a Kabaddi game uh, which would knock all the cricket uh, at least uh, on the day. And do you know, again it's a peculiar uh, sick business of sports, uh, but I know it because I go around and I am in touch with people. In England, in Canada, in Germany, there are massive Kabaddi tournaments held and they have an all Europe Kabaddi tournament and they have an all American Kabaddi tournament and these teams go and all the few six or many six who have done well, they give so much gold and so many medals and so much rupees. I mean, it is even been promoted, Canada. So, I want to look to promoting the Aam Aadmi games, one are even in the regular games, what I just spelt out to you, the other is even the Desi games, because this Desi desh hai. So, these are some of the thoughts. Then second, can I do something worthwhile for athletes who remain in poverty when everybody has forgotten them? As I say, even the army medals, forget these medals. You have your picture taken with the president and the prime minister, but you go home with a piece of bronze and goodbye. Goodbye. Military medals I know, I am an army family. It gets them nothing. Well, I want these people to have a respectable old age if they have not been able to get money in their early years one way or the other, things like this. The girls, I will push them, I, uh, P. T. Usha and Shini Ibrahim and I like to see girls up there. You know, you have mentioned that how you, you, you know, you are going to talk to Mr. Pavar and maybe get, I do not know what, 20 crores, 200 crores uh, out of him that you can use for, uh, for other games and, 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 and sports. Um, what is is, 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 is is a resource or the access to resources a problem or a difficulty for you and the government? No, no, it is it's, it's not that. I mean, there is a certain amount of money, but it is about seven, eight hundred crores. Certainly, I said in my parliamentary answer yesterday, and I am lucky the Prime Minister sits in the Rajya Sabha the day I answer Thursday, and Wednesday in the Lok Sabha the day I answer there. <laughs> so, I am afraid he, he has to or he does listen, and so it is worthwhile. And certainly, in eight lakh crores of budget, why should we have eight hundred crores? It is a simple answer, a question, a billion, billion people. So, I could do with more money. I am also aware that perhaps in the past ministry has not spent the full money. Maybe there is a lot of delay and bureaucracy and we want a lot of paperwork. I have never done paperwork. I managed to skate through life without doing anything. So, I do it. You know, there are so many issues associated with sport uh, and some of them you alluded to is, um, is, 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 is sponsorship. Is commercial sponsorship, the sponsorship of, um, of, of organization and companies and products uh, that are not very good for health. And we're not just talking about tobacco, it can be soft drinks and, and a whole range of other issues around it. Do you think that you will be able to address some of those, are those passionate concerns? Because in a sense, they also undermine uh, the very aspect and, and, and the aspirations of sport. Yeah, you see certainly the sponsorship has to be carefully thought out. You are alluding to liquor and cigarettes and all. And soft uh, drinks uh, and, and, and all those and kind of things. So, that is a question thinking people have to worry about. 
and 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 a society because india as a society as a collective group uh, i see the health minister struggling in parliament uh, on some of the things he wants to block uh, and uh, sometimes he succeeds sometimes not so much perhaps but but i think our society as a whole because the, neither government nor a minister can just do it that's not democracy the totality of our people also must uh, become aware and help in all this and and i see that i say, i see what you're saying and that of course is related to sports and sports must be very careful what it is attaching itself to so are we likely to see a lead from you in your ministry on, on an issue such as this i don't know what lead at the moment i can think of but i'm 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 telling you my attitude my attitude isn't it for example i see now which uh, i was reminded of i wasn't aware because you know i've not been linked with them in day to day for a long time uh, but now the olympic games ha have sponsors from industry worldwide but then my simple thought is as i said earlier that they can have all the placards around the stadium like in cricket why should they want their general manager here or there fit or unfit to hold the olympic torch leave that to the sports people leave it to pt usha milka singh shini ibrahim and i wanted incidentally in this run uh, which i want to say here i wanted at least 20 boys and girls 10 and 10 of age to 15 to 17 who are you know already coming up as good athletes or whatever game and if they have touched the torch at 15 age the real torch of the real olympics they will beat the hell out of milka singh's record 10 years later next time i hope i see it so what aspiration now you've been chief election commissioner parliamentarian minister what antonia you trained with uh, tenzin norgay who climbed everest no i <laughs> no he didn't but he tenzin norgay did so he climbed everest and, and and you've had so many sort of peaks in a sense in your life uh, any other mountains not literal but figurative to climb no none really uh, i have no particular focus of a next uh, uh, goal to achieve all i want to do is that whatever is left to me of an active life to go on being able to do and to try and do something worthwhile uh, something which some people somewhere might say ke all right if he was there in this or that place uh, well he contributed something that's about all and a part of that that youthful spirit you talked about how youth is a state of mind what has enabled you to maintain youth as a state of mind I don't know it's it's just my you see I'll tell you uh uh you're old when passion is dead I've seen 30 or 35 or 40 year old officers or ministers or I see plenty even today who have you know when you go to the ECG fellows all of us go <laughs> sometime I go I go and frankly their emotional graph is just flat in my eyes they are dead yes they are walking around they are looking very fit they are doing this or that job par kuch nahi ho raha because unko gussa hi nahi aata hua hai to aapko kis you should have some passion to aapko sabse zyada mere ko har cheez pe aata hai all sorts of things when i see something i am involved and i try to push for whatever i can now i left the commission in 2001 at the moment i had nothing to do no job no work yes i read a lot and right occasionally when i feel like but the moment i went into nizamuddin to walk around i told every fellow all the chaprasis the guards uh, the gardeners and the guys who are doing the repairs i said i have appointed myself um, uh, superintendent for overseeing hamayun's tomb complex and ask any of them i chase them but they love it because nobody takes interest in your work the chap who i have planted at least 200 more trees or 300 and i talk with naresh every day i call him and say yahan ye nahi laga wahan wo lagao now it's my passion and repairing the tomb what good is your garden if the roof is going to one day fall in because over 50 years they've gone on every time there's a leak in the dome they put more cement on it or something like that and one day it will drop so i went and chased people mr jaypal reddy was minister other ministers jagmohan i keep on badgering them as a private citizen ab mere ko gussa kyon aata hai bhai because i am living in india and i am living jaan aaya bhi 
बस ये है और कुछ नहीं है थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग अस दैट जोश एंड शेयरिंग इट विद अस थैंक यू वेरी मच सर दिस इज बिन